and I've taught this form of discussing narrative structure, so sorry, I'll be a little um, experimental in my approach. But did anyone who uh, perhaps studied English literature, uh, anyone recognize this? Anyone? Joseph, Joseph Conrad, perhaps? Does, so this is um, every story ever told. This is the, the, yeah, I'm sorry, yes, Joseph Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Yes, correct, Joseph Campbell. This is every story ever, to ever told. It's the monomyth um, that begins in the known world with your protagonists, their call to adventure, um, their approach into the unknown world and their struggles, their reward, uh, and then their journey home. That would be weird. Um, but their journey home. So this is kind of the very barest outline of a narrative structure. Um, and it very, very nicely fits into the scientific manuscript structure as well. You've got your call to adventure or your introduction where you lay out the world that you live in and the problems that you want to solve. You've got your approach into the unknown world or your methods that tells you where you're going on your journey and what struggles you'll face. You've got your reward as you come out of the unknown world, your results. And then you've got your conclusion, your journey home, where you take your results and you bring them back and make them part of the known world. So. We already know how to construct narratives about science because it's the format of a scientific paper. Um, so what I want to help everyone with uh, today is how to take um, our relatively sterile format that we use when we write a scientific paper that already has this outline of a narrative uh, and turn it into a compelling story uh, that resonates uh, with the general public um, or resonates with your target audience. Um, so really uh, developing that, that level of storytelling. And this is, this is going to be a very brief introduction because I want to break off into the groups uh, fairly quickly so we can get talking. Um, but looking at the structure of a scientific paper as, as a narrative that's already been built for you um, can really help you kind of uh, figure out where you're going when you take a, a something like a scientific manuscript and then turn it into a document that the general public uh, can engage with. Um, I wrote IMRD here and I have no idea. Oh, right, of course, intro method result discussion. Never mind. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, so if anyone is familiar with Randy Olson's work, um, this is uh, sort of what he introduces in, in his latest book uh, and touches on a little bit in his first book, which was Don't Be Such a Scientist. Um, and I actually have a couple issues with Don't Be Such a Scientist, but that's a totally different thing. Um, but probably the, the hardest thing as scientists that we do when we turn our, our papers into, into something for the general public is uh, getting rid of jargon. Um, because Jargon is the language we use to talk precisely about the things we mean. Uh, but unfortunately, not everyone has the same baseline uh, for jargon. Uh, and so uh, being able to f determine what is jargon and what is not, uh, pulling out the unimportant jargon terms to replace them with uh, more general terms, but then more importantly, leaving in the jargon terms that are meaningful for a discussion. So. Um, Actually, everything on this little chart is, is a jargon term in some ways. Introduction means something totally different if you're talking about a scientific manuscript than if you're talking about anything else that might have an introduction. Um, journey home could mean tons of different things to tons of different people. Uh, so all of those, if you were to turn that into just a generic narrative, uh, would have to be translated into a way that people can understand. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to do today. Um, I gave everyone... Uh, six papers, I guess people read different ones, um, and these are all papers that have uh, been taken um, by mainstream journalists or by science bloggers, um, and the interesting points, the, um, the kind of the stories that would resonate with the public have been pulled out of them 
and translated it into uh, sort of a general science piece. Uh, some of them in newspapers, uh, some of them in blogs, some of them in magazines. But in all those these cases, uh, the journalists found stories inside the scientific papers that weren't the actual intent of the scientific papers. Um, and in some of these cases, there were people I knew, and they were really surprised by what people actually pulled out of the story and turned into a story. Um, so we're going to dig into those, um, I think, pretty much right now. Um, we can, we can. No, 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 no. We'll do, we'll do. So we'll do some. We'll do the breakout groups. Um, so the people who had the two arsenic um, phosphate papers, uh, the rebuttal, and the main one should stick together and maybe tell each other what, what each paper was about and then try to find out what the, what the bigger stories were. And then we'll come back. I don't know if we necessarily need the full 40 minutes for this. Maybe we'll come back in 20 minutes um, and I'll have uh, the actual uh, journalism. So